let's talk a little bit about Lyme disease. You, you have a book on the topic, and I guess the first question is we hear a lot about it, but what is it exactly? Yeah, so Lyme disease is actually a bacterial infection, and it's mostly transmitted through the bite of a tick. Uh, however, we've now learned that you can get it from other sources, potentially fleas and mosquitoes. Uh, it's endemic in certain parts of the world, particularly in the United States, New England, and the central part of the Midwest. But what we've discovered is that it's now migrating away from those areas, and so we now really see it in every single state in the country but this tick bites your skin and once it bites you there's uh, bacteria in its saliva that it transmits through the bite gets into the bloodstream and then it can cause really up to a hundred different kinds of symptoms mm -hmm. so the initial presentation often is quite vague it looks like a lot of other things we actually call Lyme the great imitator of the great mimic just because it looks like so many other different kinds of illnesses mm -hmm. so you know that's that's the bulk of it. And is that why it's often either not diagnosed correctly or exactly. misdiagnosed as something else? Yeah, it, it's commonly either underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, just because of that very reason. And there's a lot of classic symptoms that we associate with Lyme disease. However, a lot of people don't get those symptoms. So if they don't get those symptoms, it would be very easy to mistake it for mono, for a bad flu, or some other type of infectious agent. So explain uh, the connection, I guess, between that being predominantly a tick-borne illness and also an autoimmune condition and how, how the two are related because I don't think many people would re relate it to an autoimmune condition. Right. Well, what happens when you initially get the tick bite is you get that initial infection. And like any infection, most people feel pretty sick. You know, you can get a high fever, you can feel tired, you can get joint pain and other kinds of symptoms. But what happens is that organism stays in your body longer. It actually has the capacity to start triggering this autoimmune event. And it's a little bit different than other autoimmune diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. It's a different type of a reaction. But we've got good research now showing that Lyme and some of these other co-infections have the capacity to trigger that part of the immune system that starts interacting with your connective tissue, with your nervous system, your brain, and so forth. So, you know, we've got that initial infection part, and we've got that secondary sort of autoimmune part, which ultimately relates to inflammation. And that inflammatory process is mostly what people experience. So when they get the brain fog, when their joints hurt and their muscles aches, it's really that secondary autoimmune inflammatory response that they're dealing with. Why can symptoms vary so much in Lyme disease from person to person? Is it just because of the, the makeup of the individual does it have something to do with that or you know why is there such a wide range when we talk about the flu we know what the yeah. symptoms are and things like that yeah you know it's a great question and I think it's a combination I think it has to do with the individuality of the biochemical terrain of each person but we've actually got some new evidence that the different strain of Lyme can cause various symptoms too you know we know that the strain we see in Europe is a little bit different than what we see here in North America and what's interesting about Borrelia that's the name of the organism that causes Lyme you know there's about a hundred different strains in the US and up to 300 strains worldwide so there's a lot of even genetic variability within that same organism so we find that you know the organism that they get in Europe causes you know different kinds of symptoms than what we see here in the US so I think if you take you know the individual variability plus the genetic variability of the organism that sort of leads to this constellation of symptoms that varies just from person to person so when we talk about Lyme disease what are the conventional treatments I guess of it right now and how effective are they <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, conventional treatment uh, really hasn't changed much in 40 years of understanding Lyme. It's still 10 to 21 days of antibiotics. That's the CDC recommendation. And for someone who's got known Lyme in the brain, they do recommend IV antibiotics for about the same time frame. But the conventional methodology is such that, you know, when you're done with that treatment, you're done. It really kind of doesn't matter how you feel. You know, the thought is that that's enough to get rid of the microbe. It's done. And if you've got anything left after that, well, it's not Lyme disease and you know this is really what leads to the controversy in Lyme is you know how do you know that you've completely gotten rid of the organism how do you know when you're done with treatment you know so there's a, another faction of doctors that says well let's take a look at the individual not necessarily what we're seeing on a piece of paper with lab work and if we start treating the individual you know we're gonna go for a longer period of treatment you know what's really interesting with Lyme is that it's a very slow growing organism and I don't think a lot of people realize this you know most bacteria in your body replicate every 20 minutes Lyme replicates up to every 16 days that's incredibly slow for bacteria so the course of treatment has to reflect you know the lifespan of the organism you know for example if someone gets tuberculosis 
tuberculosis, it's three hardcore antibiotics for a year. And the reason it's such a long course of treatment is because it's a, such a slow growing organism. I mean, I was a microbiologist before I was a doctor and I used to, to do these tests and we would set up for TB, you know, it takes three months to do a culture. Wow. It's extremely slow. So with Lyme, it's, it's not to the extreme that tuberculosis is, but it is to the point that, you know, it is a slow growing organism and therefore the treatment probably needs to be longer than it is. But for whatever reason, I said the CDC recommendations have really never changed. And, uh, you know, in terms of what are the success rates, you know, I think it's hard to measure. Uh, the CDC has a higher opinion, I think, than most of us that treat Lyme. Um, just because, you know, they said, you know, you have three weeks and you're done. Uh, most of us who've seen patients who've done that, those people don't experience that benefit. You know, they need a much longer course of treatment. You know, in terms of antibiotic therapy, you know, we've got good evidence that when you catch Lyme early, antibiotics can be very effective. But the course of treatment probably needs to be longer than three weeks. And I think most of us who do that, we do at least six weeks, if not longer, just to really make sure that we've, you know, eradicated the organism. Uh, however, when you get past that initial infection, you know, we've got good evidence in the literature and plus what I've observed clinically, you know, people don't tend to do as well with antibiotic therapy. At that point, again, I think we're transitioning more out to the initial infection phase, more of that autoimmune kind of reaction, in which case just getting rid of the bug by itself may not completely resolve the symptoms. You know, if we're dealing with the secondary autoimmune effect, we really need to start thinking of Lyme as an autoimmune disease just versus a straight up infection. So, I mean, I've seen patients, you know, who been on antibiotics for months and even years uh, on you know with different different courses of antibiotics and they're still having the same symptoms I have one patient actually who was on continuous antibiotics for 12 years and she was hospitalized three times because of the antibiotics yeah. so you know we get to that point of you know does the treatment cause more damage than Lyme itself and you know I think all of us as practitioners have to weigh that balance you know is our therapy helping more than it's hurting mm -hmm. and uh, that's why you know my approach is a little bit different where we really start looking at things that work with the body instead of against the body